Hi, I'm Spencer Krauss. I've been building robots for over 20 years. In that time, I've seen a lot of interesting things, and I've heard a lot of interesting stories. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is a place where my peers and I can relax, have a drink, and talk about some of the crazier things we've seen at work and some of the experiences we've had that have gotten us to where we are today. Subscribe today to join the collaboration. Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Chris Paxton. Chris is the embodied AI lead at Hello Robot. Chris, welcome to the pod. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, this is fun. I'm glad you suggested this. Um, I see you all the time, but we uh, we don't do this very often, so it's good to have you back on. It's been a couple years, right? It's been a couple years. I think so, yeah. You were like one of the earliest guests. Yeah. um, This is when I was at NVIDIA. That was right. when you were at NVIDIA, and you've yeah. had a whole other job in between now and then. That's and true. So I, yeah, yeah, I was a research scientist at NVIDIA, and then at Meta, yeah, doing AI. So, no. Yeah. You're one of, like, less than half a dozen people I would trust to actually know what they're talking about on AI. Well, that's, that's nice to hear. I'm glad to hear that. You're it's, uh, yeah. I would like to think that I know what I'm talking about on AI. That's good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So embodied AI. All right. So let's, uh, what does that mean? So it means robotics, yeah. though. Is the answer no, but it means a uh, ro- AI it, with a body. Yes, it means like so robotics. Yeah, it means AI you care about. No, sorry, yeah. shouldn't say that. Uh, but it means AI. Uh, AI, AI that, I care about. It means AI you care about specifically, yeah. Spencer. <laughs> yeah, it means can we so can we make robots um, smart and able to? I mean, it, it's actually a little bit broader. So so technically, AI um, AI robotics also includes things like um, sorry, embodied AI also includes things like. Uh, anything where you put take a robot and or take a AI system and you want to deploy it into a into a real environment. So like one of the first ways that this is probably going to come up is actually not um, robots, but it's like like your your uh, a VR AR headset, right? So it's like can you look looking at things and so Meta just recently released their um, their their glasses, their, their whatever they're the Ray Bans, where you can like they they have a uh, voice chat integration now, so you can like ask it what like what you're looking at, have it describe you. because like being able to understand the world around you is a very is like that that is the fundamental part that allows us to get towards generalist robots, and I, and I think part of this is also true for AR. So it is so first of all like having robot having AI systems that can help out people who are who have disabilities. That's all, like that is actually generally very useful. Yeah, okay, even if it's yeah, case. right. Like the, it is, it is a useful use case. I don't think that's necessarily the one that most people have in mind when they talk about this kind of stuff. But I feel like the um, if there's a lot of stuff with like, can you make things context sensitive? Can you make them like? Can you make it so that uh, like if I can can you have can you like if I if I'm looking at something like if I'm looking at something if I'm looking at if I'm cooking my dinner and I'm wearing my glasses, can I ask it? Um, is this done? Right, like, does this look good to you? <laughs> right, that kind of thing. Right, that's. I mean, that's not. I'm not saying that these models can do this yet. They can't. I don't. I don't really think they can. But like, maybe they can in some outlier case. But but the point is that. Um, but you're right. If you could do that in a perfect the world, I mean, that would be nice. Right, and that is very useful. Right, like, yeah, that kind of like, or asking questions. Hey, like, what is this? I don't know. Does this look good or not? Should I eat this? Yeah. Right. Should this, this look safe to eat? This, yeah. <laughs> also, also, please do not ask your uh, Ray Bans that. Uh, because, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. <laughs> give that one for free but <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that kind of thing right so so basically if we want ai to like be out there in the real world and i, I mean i think obvious to me at least the most and, and to you the most exciting way that we can get this will happen is through is robotics right it's like it's putting robots into homes putting robots into um uh businesses and into whatever kind of environments you can imagine yeah that's awesome yeah so it's AI in a thing. I mean, just to it's simplify. It's AI that's embodied. Right. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah. so in the case of Hall <laughs> yeah, Robot, right. I mean, like, what does that actually mean? So, um... Like, what... It, th- tell me a little bit about your product. I know what it does, because I've right. seen you demo it, and we've yeah, so, so like, stuff this stuff is stuff that I've... Before, but. Yeah, so what I've been working on for, for a couple of years now, actually, before even before this, is, like, is, uh... So building generalist robots that can go into different environments. And, I'm, like, uh, I'm actually... Yeah, giving a talk on this kind of stuff at CMU uh, too, like on on Thursday. So oh, sweet this is fun. Tuesday. Thursday. I'll be in Boston, but uh, otherwise yeah. I would go. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, it's okay. It's not that. It's not. But so the the um, I'll start going to your CMU talks if you start going to mine. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Steal. Nice. Good. Pump those yeah. uh, viewership numbers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So so what do we so what do we have here? So. Um, 
basically, so what do we need to be able to get robots to go into different environments? Uh, what, what makes them, what, what makes, uh, makes robots able to be generalist, like generally useful assistance for people? And so this is the kind of thing that we've been working on for quite a while. Um, like this is, so that's when I'm working, when I'm talking about body AI, it's not just about, it's not about making, making the robots themselves, but about like, but personally about like, how do we have build agents that can interact with their world in intelligent ways and actually make them into useful assistance for people. Right. So, so they'll actually be able to help out. Yeah. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. Um, help anyone out with like whatever they want. So this means things like, uh, like learning low level, like learning skills. Like how do I open a drawer? How do I pick something up? Whatever. This was OK Robot was the project, and this was the robot moving around my house actually. And uh, we, we so like, um, my collaborators um, we tested on a, a bunch of different homes in New York and New Jersey because they're, they're based in NYU, and then. Uh, but otherwise, we have. But I tested here. We tested in uh, at Meta's uh, apartment in um, in the Bay Area. That we, we sort of this apartment set aside for testing at Meta for for like running robot experiments. So this means that you could do things like so. Can you have the robot go and like pick up any object and put it anywhere? And uh, after after you map the house out with an iPhone, uh, so. I think this is a really nice task that I care a lot about because it, so this, the task being like, can you pick up any object and put it in any location, right? Because it's kind of like a fundamental, so something like 90% of industrial tasks are pick and place tasks like this, right? As I'm, right. And I think that when it comes to being able to interact with the world, it's like the, in my opinion, one of the best tests of how good a perception system actually is. Oh, right. that's like, interesting. Right. So, like, if you look at this um, this workshop around us, right? So, like, I don't know, it's not really showing up, but, I mean, if you're... Yeah. They, you probably, they probably can't see. I've yeah, you can't see. Right, because it's all, like, yeah, exactly. You can't see all the clutter from these nice frames, but, but trust me, it's there. So, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> I guess, that, no, sorry. That's all right. It put me on blast. It's okay. <laughs> no, it's, no, but... Yeah, like, so this used to be a, a space for working on robots before the podcast studio. So but, there's a bunch of tools hanging up on the wall and... Right. Table and, and now audio equipment because it's a podcast studio. Right, but uh, yeah, I, I'm just using it to illustrate. There's probably like a hundred things that I can see, right? From like a hundred individual objects that I can see just from where I'm sitting, right? And this is true of like my house too. My kitchen probably has many more. It's much messier than this. Let's so say, <laughs> but uh, it's Spencer knows. This is what yeah. I show people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but uh, right. So like when you're looking at the, when you're looking at that kind of environment, that's actually very hard for a machine to understand, right? That's the so that's the big problem when it comes to getting things that'll uh, that'll be able to perform these kinds of tasks well in a wide range of environments. It's like, like if I take a picture of this scene and like, it, like just take a picture of like your your kitchen cabinet and throw it to ChatGPT like without preparing anything, and ask it ask it to describe what's there, and it'll get some things right. It'll get an impressive amount of things right, but it may not. Get, but it won't get everything right. Like it'll it'll make lots of mistakes, and that's a uh, that's bad when it's actually like when when a mistake means that, like it'll drop something, right? Or, or like it, eat this thing that you shouldn't eat. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Please don't ask your Ray Bans whether or not you can eat something. I think it'll <laughs> probably probably not end well for you eventually. I wouldn't like, advise it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's why it's funny. I'm laughing about it. <laughs> but don't do that, please. No, yeah. Probably not a good idea. Who knows? Maybe it'll just say no all the time. A lot of them just say no all the time. That's probably the safe move, but yeah, that's a boring answer, right? Really and then, yeah, but that's exactly. also that's also a big failure, right? Because if you because eventually eventually you get to this point where you end up with which is sort of happening with a lot of these bigger models like ChatGPT is that at some point you just kind of like give up because I don't know I can't really ask it anything interesting anymore. Like it's very they're very very good for for a lot of things. So yeah, so. no, for sure. I mean, it's definitely ruled out like a lot of like I know I've I've asked questions that ChatGPT <laughs> just is refuses like, to I'm answer. Not going to that. It's yeah yeah. Uh, right, good at coding, really good at coding, definitely. That, that's been interesting. Do you actually use it in your work? Yeah, I use uh, I use uh, GitHub Copilot all the time. I Sweet. think it's I think it's really really good, really useful. Like, it's just a very um, nice version of autocomplete. I guess I've given it some toy coding yeah. problems just to validate the concept, and that's impressive. But, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I just don't code anymore. So right. I mean, as yeah. far as I've gone with it, i be like, show me to C++ for generating a Fibonacci sequence. Right. And that's right, but it's like, you know, that's stuff I remember from when I was in computer science school. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing about it is that it's good at picking on, picking up on patterns for, like, even if they're patterns, like, just specific to your code, right? So this is, like, really useful if you're, like, writing a bunch of boilerplate ROS code or something like this. Yeah. Where you so gotta, for, for, yeah. for people listening, we, we did... A, Experiment before we started recording, where we asked uh, GPT two about ourselves, and it was surprisingly correct. Like it was, it was. Yeah. 
But then the other one, uh, Llama 3, thought we were both characters from Parks and Recreation. That was fun. Yeah, that was that a good was, answer. That's fun. Yeah, but, <laughs> so both so if you, you want to splice that in, Carl, that might, this might be a good time to slam cut to that. Yep. So Llama 3 is a model from last week from Meta, for what it's worth. Like, that's a very, mod, that's oh, a wow. very new one. That is, it's, a, it's very impressive in a lot of ways. But it thinks we're both characters from Parks and Recreation. It does. Well, yeah. So, I mean, this was a little bit of a Lovable difficult question. Because we're not, like, I mean. We're not famous. We're not, we're not famous. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is sponsored by SKA Robotics. If you're in the market for elite field robotics expertise, please consider hiring SKA Robotics. They sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Robotics can be found at skarobotics.com. So what are what are some of the like robotics problems that you're working on in the in the not too distant future? Yeah, so uh, so one thing that we we did over the last year actually, one thing that's been consuming most of my time over the last year, let's talk about this, is um, we ran this competition for uh, at at NeurIPS, the Neural Information Processing Systems Conference, the biggest machine learning one of the biggest machine learning conferences. Uh, sorry, I see Mel, but the the other one is uh, so. So the competition goal, right, is that we have this, uh, we have a robot and we want to, it's one, it's one of our, the Hello Robot robots, it's a stretch. So it's, a, it's an affordable home robot. The idea is that um, we want to make it intelligent and useful. And so, the, so we propose this competition. Uh, the goal is that we want to do this task that I outlined earlier. So we call it open vocabulary mobile manipulation. So the task, what that means is uh, I can pick up any, can I pick up any object from any location in any home and put it down? Right. And so this is like this is what I sh end up showing you videos of. Right. These are the kinds of things that we this is the, the fundamental problem, in my opinion, that if we can solve it well, then you can do a lot of different. Then it opens up a lot of different tasks. Yeah, right? makes sense. Right. So this is things like because like once you think about like so this version is straightforward. Right. It's like I can describe an object. So like pick up the um, the apple from the sofa and put it on the table or something like Why that. Could be an apple on your sofa. I don't know. Well, well there was. <laughs> so, like, some of them are weird. Right. Like, so, like I, a part of this is like really what you care about. Again, in, in robotics, so like machine learning is very good at getting like the mean of a distribution of things, right? Like it's very good at getting the average. And I feel like you see, but it, but it's kind of often will struggle with these really weird long tail examples, right? So yeah. one of our objects is like this multi-port USB hub, which is just like, I mean, you've seen a, like it's just the dumbest object you can imagine because it's like a black cube with a wire coming out of it. And like, and I think we have a bunch of videos of the robot doing this in simulation. And it's like, why would you even, you know, but it's like, why would this be being moved from like a chair to a chair to a sofa? I don't know, but I don't know, maybe I was going to lose my laptop there. It's fine. The cable's yeah. an interesting challenge, though, because that's yeah. not rigid. So I feel like the shape probably changes as a result. Uh, of, well, I mean, these are 3D. This, this is a simulation one. It's 3D yeah. mesh. Yeah, but I, I, it probably does. It probably doesn't matter to the AI, although it is a that's very hard perception problem. Right? I mean, because that would definitely matter more in classical perception. Like if the cord were wrapped around it, like that would yeah. look like a different object. Well, I think this is a very hard object in general because it's like it could be a lot of things. <laughs> like it's a difficult object. But once you can pick, but but basically, um, the goal is to be able to pick these things up and put them somewhere else, right? So like, uh, sorry, we we were going for for the for what the challenges are, right? Yeah. Like if you can if you can really the big one is like there's there's exploring the scene. There is like to get back to like we were talking about I was talking about clutter earlier, right? So like how 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 many different objects there are that you could be seeing, and remember that you can get any single one of these objects wrong, and it'll go and pick up the wrong thing, right? So like we had one test that I ran in my house for the OK Robot, the the videos that I shared earlier, it picked up it was supposed to pick up a green water bottle, and it turns out okay, so it goes around the kitchen island and turns and looks at this water bottle, and it uh, <laughs> then misses it and sees a coffee grinder that's black and on a different table, and then drives over to it and picks it up, tries to pick it up, tries to ask stop it then because I don't want to get coffee everywhere <laughs> but uh, anyway let's see so um, but the point is like this is and these these are just like well the, the whole point of this is seeing how good off-the-shelf perception models are and the things that they're they mess up a lot in the in home environments still especially if you want to do these kinds of things and these are the kinds of things that you need to work on that uh, that are the really exciting problems uh, because like it means that you can kind of deploy your robot <laughs> deploy robots in the real environment they get and they and like there are ways of improving all of these I don't know that's, that's awesome. I don't know. No, I mean that's that's fun. Yeah, it's cool. It's a. So we ran the competition. This was the thing that this was uh this was last December. Um, it was um, we had uh, something like twenty or thirty different teams compete. Uh, we had a simulation version of this competition first, where people grabbed the weird objects like this uh, USB hub, and then we moved on to and we did a real world version of it. 
And this is, and the real world version means that we take this robot and we put it into a different home, into not into different homes, sorry, into one apartment that we owned at Meta and that we can run the robot in. And we can run the drive this thing around and see how good it does. And so that so was level of playing field. Yeah, exactly. So we like run everybody's code out and, and like, and I, I don't know. So that was, that was like, it's a neat experience because it means that like, I do feel like these kinds of competitions are the only real good way. Did you have a commentator was Will I Am there? <laughs> that would be a good idea next next time, next year. Nice. Next year I'll be there. Yeah. Um, right. I, I think that these kinds of competitions are really the only way to get a feel for these things, though. So, like, the, we were talking about this um, this thing head to head, the running the LLMs head to head earlier, right? So, this is this thing called Chatbot Arena. And the reason that I really love this thing, and I, I spend more time than I should, probably should playing around with it, is because, like, like the the interesting thing with it is that it picks two random models and puts them head to head and you come up with the questions on the fly which means that it can't like cheat right like it, 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 like i feel like there's an insane tendency to like overfit to the data that you already have with all of these models and once you do that like it looks good on on a leaderboard or on numbers but you can't trust it if you want to deploy a robot into someone's home, yeah. right? Then you get you get that situation where it picks, picks you up like the copy it doesn't grinder. tell you what the models are until you say which one is better. Yeah, that's nice. It's yeah, it's it's very well designed. It's a it's a cool little system. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And, and, and quickly, I gotta be honest. I think every single one of these just it's too verbose. Like <laughs> none of them are how I would talk. Like if you asked me to. No, I wouldn't write seventy paragraphs on a yeah. thing. Both of these are huge. They're they're both like they're they're like multiple pages worth of text, right? Like, but it's, it's only insane. gotten the things that you and I have written. It's not gotten like our spoken. Word yeah, but we it. asked it to summarize, like, or to come say what the like. Would you if if I asked you to come up with something that I would say? Would you yeah. write? <laughs> you would you would say something shorter. I, would well, say, I wouldn't want to do yeah. all the labor to write out like that's fair. Know, yeah. Seventy fucking bulleted lists, but so if there's something you want to plug in the way out, like. Um, uh, what is? What do you want to talk about? What does the future bring? What are you excited about? Um, I don't have anything that I need to plug. Uh, in Hello Robot. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not. Uh, um, I um, yeah no nothing in particular that I want to plug. I think that it's just I'm excited about the future for robotics and AI as much as we have fun playing with these kinds of things. Like they are really cool, right? Yeah, like they're, well, I have uh, you to thank yeah. for kind of turning me on to all this. Yeah, yeah. like. Like they're clearly like not they're not solving all the world's problems or anything like that like some people will say but they're like they're they're cool they've got so much in them that you can do stuff with and it's I I was pretty happy when this one seemed to know who we were though yeah, <laughs> like that's, no, that that's a first that's like today like yeah. so uh, yeah I don't know yeah uh, anyway. uh, I mean I think GP two with its reading yeah. of LinkedIn is gonna make people very happy yeah exactly right immortalized in the in yeah. the weights somewhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right yeah. I think that might be a segment, is like getting like GPD 2s impression of my guests on the podcast. That'd be fun, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. If you've made it this far, chances are you'll like other episodes too. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. Subscribe today to get notified when the latest episodes release and support the channel. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is sponsored by SKA Robotics. If you're in the market for elite field robotics expertise, please consider hiring SKA Robotics. They sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Robotics can be found at skarobotics.com. Thanks again and see you on the next one.